Right. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I was going to compliment, mashallah, if they were uh, uh, the, the reciter of the Quran today at the Salah. He just like, you know, hit the... The, the subject that I was going to talk about, subhanAllah. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. I would like to introduce myself. My name, my name is Ruba Kawar or Ruba Kiwar. And I am originally, my parents are from Jordan, but I was born in Denmark. And uh, but my parents are Christian Arab. And so uh, we went back to Jordan back in 1985. I was only four years old. And then I stayed in Jordan most of my life until I was 21 years old as a Christian. Uh, my father was a pastor in, in the church. He was a church planter. That means he used to open churches in Jordan with the help of the Christian missionaries. And my mom was a Christian missionary. She used to uh, tell people about you know Christianity and uh, doing Bible studies in the and the, you know and if they had any opportunity to tell also Muslims about Christianity they wouldn't mind. Um, so and my sister is a is a great singer in the church and so on. So I was also my uh, my mom and my dad's right hand. You know I was helping them in the church until we came here in 2002 as immigrants and uh, we had to work hard you know from the beginning to try to establish ourselves i was going to school i was going to work and so on and then after a year uh, my father died and that was like a big question mark for me you know asking god why would god take my father who was one of the best people i ever known you know as a father for me he was very humble. He used to give a lot of people, you know, uh, he, he was very generous and so on. And subhanAllah, uh, you know, this is, th that was the time where I started to search and, and question my belief and, and see, see if it, I was the right or the wrong. Also, I had the cultural shock coming from an Arab country where you only see Christians and Muslims coming over here to see all kind of you know, ethnicities from different backgrounds, from different religions. I was studying different religions, you know, like Hinduism, Sihism, uh, 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 you know, uh, Buddhism. Uh, I even like went to the cultists, those, you know, uh, they were like doing some kind of voodoo stuff. And I learned a lot from a lot of religions, but none of them actually went, you know, inside my mind. I'm like, okay, that's what I want. I was, you know, still Christian. And subhanAllah, uh, long story short, I met with some people uh, that they were Muslims and we were debating, like, you know, Ahmad did that style, you know? We were debating really hard. I was trying to convince them to come to Islam, uh, to Christianity, and they were trying to convince me to come to Islam. And uh, I had to quit my relationship with them for, you know, for a while. And they were like a group of people, they were like women and men in the college, because my mom was coming. And uh, subhanAllah, this time where I started to learn a little bit and learn about, uh, about the Quran. Although I lived most of my life in Islamic country, but really we never thought about it like, okay, you know, changing religion, probably because it was an identity more than it is a faith. You know, Christian, Arab, usually they are the minority, they want to keep for, you know, for themselves that identity, right? And subhanAllah, uh, I started learning and studying the Bible and the Quran and doing some comparisons and, and everything that I was learning from the Bible, uh, teaching uh, the teachings of Jesus, they were so much matching with what the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. Until finally, you know, alhamdulillah, you know, I kept reading and reading the Quran, trying also to find some mistakes in the Quran so I can come to the, my Muslims friends and tell them, hey, look, there are those mistakes in the Quran, you know, and that means your Quran is wrong. Astaghfirullah. I mean, I, that's how I was. And so, but subhanAllah, something kept grabbing, like, you know, bringing me back to the Quran to read it more and read it more and read it more. And subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally uh, guided me to Islam. And my story is actually online on YouTube with, uh, with Sheikh Fahd al-Kandari, Bil Quran and also 
uh, with Dr. Muhammad Al Awadi. I have another episode, and they are in Arabic and they are translated to English as well. Alhamdulillah. So you can watch it, inshallah. But today I want to talk about something that it is my. I feel that this is my expertise is to learn, you know, because I know the Bible very well, and I studied also in the theology school in, in the Bible, and then I, after Islam, I finished my Sharia degree, alhamdulillah. So I have uh, some kind of insight of the Bible and the Quran. And I found that the Bible actually, so many verses, of course, it's altered, it's changed, it's muharraf, but there are some, still some truth in it. There are some verses where you can actually read it and say, hey, this is actually, you know, very much like what the Quran says here. Or this talks about someone who's going to come after Jesus and so on. So today I'm going to be talking about Prophet Muhammad in the Bible. Is he actually in the Bible? And before I actually go into the subject, I want to first break it down to you and tell you what is the, the Bible exactly. You know, we hear a lot about uh, the Bible and we only think about it as the Gospel and, uh, and the Torah or Al-Injil with Torah. But it is more than that. And I'm going to go real quick with that before I actually go into the subject. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says in um, Surah Al-A'raf, those who follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet, who they find written in what they have in the Torah and the Gospel, who enjoins upon them what is right and forbids them what is wrong and makes lawful for them the good things and prohibits for them the evil and relieves them uh, of the burden and the shackles which were upon them and so on. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that there is a prophet that it is written, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as he is al ummi who is unlettered, who couldn't read, it is written in their books. And that's what I'm going to be talking about. So is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in the Bible? The Bible actually is two parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament talk about all the, written, the writings or the scriptures that they were written before Jesus Christ's birth. The New Testament are the scriptures that they are written after Jesus Christ's birth, okay? And so some of those, you know, are the Torah, the five books that they were that the the Jews actually claim that they were written by Musa alayhi salam or Moses peace be upon him, are the first five books in the Old Testament, and they are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, the ones on red. And then we have the Nabuim, which are different Nabi and different prophets that they actually wrote those books, not actually because there is a lot of big question marks on who actually wrote these books. But they say, you know, that they were written by those prophets. The Psalms of David, which is a Zabur. And there are other books, it's called Ketubim, or the Kutub, the books that they are talking about the history of Israel and, and the Jews before Jesus Christ born, okay? So there are three parts in the Old Testament. Ta, Na, Ka, or they call it the Pentateuch. Ta for the Torah, Na for the uh, for the Nabuim or the <coughs> books of the of the prophets and Ka for the Ketubim, the books of the pro, uh, of the uh, of the history. Okay, and so these are the Old Testament. Now the New Testament are different. The New Testaments are four Gospels plus other letters that they were sent to different churches that they were formed <coughs> after Jesus Christ. The four Gospels, none of them called the Gospel of Jesus. None of them. They are Ma uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, okay? And they are said that they are the, two of them are the disciples of Jesus who saw Jesus and they wrote about his biography. And the other two, uh, which are Mark and Luke, that they just heard stories from people and they just wrote, it, wrote them down, okay, and scribed them. So those are the four, but none of them are the gospel of Jesus. None of them is called Injil al-Isa or Injil al-Masih, none of them, okay? And then there are the epistles, are the, the letters that they were sent to the church after the church was formed in different places. And most of them were written by Paul, is the one who formed the theology of the Christianity, you know, uh, at that time. And then there is the prophecy revelation talking about the end of the days. So 
What is more important to know that, you know, when we talk about the Bible and we say the Bible is the, is the word of Allah or the word of God, no. The Quran was very specific. He did not say the Bible or Al-Kitab al-Muqaddas. He said Al-Injil wa Torah. He only talked about Al-Tawrah and Al-Injil and Al-Zabur, you know, and Suhuf Ibrahim wa Musa and Al-Quran. Those are the five books. So Al-Injil is a part of the Bible. The, uh, uh, the Torah is part of the Bible, but it's not the whole Bible. And also Al-Zabur is a part of the Bible, but it's not the whole Bible, okay? So that's what, what, what I always tell my, uh, my students. I used to teach at uh, Islamic School of Irving in, in Texas, and I used to uh, make it like training for the youth, you know, how to make da'wah. And when they talk, don't talk about it like, oh, it is, you know, that the Bible is the, the word of Allah. It's the gospel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent 100% correct when it was sent in the beginning. It was 100% correct and the uh, Torah that it was 100% correct. And then after that, over time, it has changed and so on. Okay, and so these are the, uh, the books in general, the Old Testament and, and the New Testament. Now what Ahmad Didat, rahimahullah, how many people they heard about Ahmad Didat? Of course, everybody, alhamdulillah. So Ahmad Didat, he does a style that it is known from the beginning at the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and also it was known, it is known also by the, the theologians uh, that they, are, they teach in the theology schools. And this style is called typological uh, fulfillment, all the typology th theology. And what does it mean is they go to the Old Testament, the books that they were written before Jesus, and they try to find pieces and verses and, uh, and scripts, scriptures that they talk about Jesus in the future, and that they try to match it with the New Testament, you know, with the New Testament that it talks about Jesus, and they say, and I'm gonna give you an example in just a second, and they say, okay, this is about Jesus, all right? And here's an example. It talks about, you know, in the Old Testament, in Isaiah, it was one of the prophets, he said, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, okay? And that was written about a thousand years or actually 600 years before Jesus Christ. Now, in the New Testament, it was fulfilled when Jesus Christ was born from a, uh, from, a vir from a virgin, from Virgin Mary, without a father, right? And so it says, uh, the angels answered, the angel an answered vir Virgin Mary, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. There are tons of books that the theologian wrote about what is written in the Old Testament and how it was how it was fulfilled in the, in the New Testament, okay, about the coming of Jesus and the Savior for them, and then how it was fulfilled in the New Testament. And I, was, I just want to tell you that this actually verse, it was mis, uh, mistranslated because they used the word virgin, and this word is not actually in the Old Testament. The real word in Hebrew is Alma. This is what it was used, and Alma, it means the young girl. It doesn't have to be virgin, she doesn't have to be that she did not get married, okay? But it, it used to be, uh, 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 you know, it, the real word is actually a young woman. But what happened is they mistranslated and they put instead betula, it means al-batul, you know, it means virgin. So subhanAllah, you know, they, they changed some of the, you know, of the words, and that's called also etiology in the theology, to finally, you know, get to their point to say that everything is in the Bible and the Old Testament is actually pointing to Jesus as he is the savior. But I'm gonna to prove to you that actually that's not true because there are so many other verses in the Old Testament and the New Testament, they do not apply to Jesus at all. So for example, it tells you about a person who's gonna come and he's gonna be a king, right? Or a chief or like a, a leader. Jesus never was, was never a leader. He was just a person, a humble person. He was a prophet, he was, he was generous, yes. He, he was a healer, yes. But he was never a leader, you know. He never actually overthrown Roman and took over and he was the leader, never. 
But we know that the leader for us was Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who many of the tribes actually came and they gave him al bayah and gave him the authority to, and, and the loyalty to him, subhanAllah. So uh, this is what I always say, and this is actually Ahmad Didat's style also. You know, we have the Old Testament, the Tana, and then we have the New Testament, and then we have the Final Testament, which is the Quran. So we have the Old, the New, and then the Final, the Final Testament in the Quran. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to match some of the words or some of the scriptures from the Old and New Testament and show you how it is actually in the Quran. So that style also it was it was uh, used also if you read al rahiq al maktoum which is uh, uh, the sealed nectar for uh, of the pro biography of the prophet muhammad sallallahu how actually some jews they could quote from their books you know uh, and say that this is about the one who is coming in the future subhanallah and so they use the torah and the gospel to prophesy about the coming prophet, which uh, the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Some of them believed, like Salman al farisi and some of them they did not believe, right? And until now, we have the same thing. When we go and tell them about these things, some of the Christians would believe, and some of them will not believe. Subhanallah. So, is Muhammad name mentioned in the Bible? Actually, no. The Muhammad name is not mentioned in the Bible. The same thing in the Old Testament when they were trying to prove that Jesus actually is prophesied about in the Old Testament, even Jesus' name is not mentioned in the Old Testament. It talks about that he is born from a virgin. It talks about that he's going to be, uh, he's gonna come and give peace and he's gonna be generous and so on. And it's gonna talk about his attributes, but will never talk about his name as Jesus as Yesh, Yesua in, in the Hebrew or Isa in Arabic. We'll never do that. The same thing also if we go back to the Quran, it says, Ya'ti Badi, uh, Afwan, it says about that a prophet is coming after me. His name is Ahmed. It did not say Muhammad. His name was Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But why, why the Quran said Ahmed? There is an accuracy over here. Ahmed, it means the praised. So it talks about his attributes. It's not, necessarily, it's not necessary to talk about him as a name, but talk about his attributes. And now I'm going to be showing you some of the, uh, uh, some of the things. Uh, from the Old Testament, this is Psalms of David, okay? And I want you to, uh, this talks about, uh, you know, about people that they're going to go to the desert and they will be praising God and they will be doing, uh, you know, rituals and they're going to be worshiping God. But I want you to, Focus on number six. It says, passing through the valley of Becca. Valley, valley of Becca. They make it a spring. The early rain also covers it with blessings. SubhanAllah. This word, it was not translated to any language because until now, they don't know what is Becca. You know? And I went back to uh, Bible.com and I tried to find out what is Becca. And it says here, probably weeping as buka. And in Arabic it says, yamshuna uh, fi wadi buka. That's what it says. It does not say wadi bakka. Because the Arab, they don't want, they do not want to, you know, to say that it is actually bakka as Mecca, you know. And, or it says the balsam tree. But no one actually knows what is bakka. Until we know, right, as Muslims, we know what Mecca is, is Mecca. And if you go also to the first volume of, for the biography of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu it says in volume one, talking about Mecca, it was also called as the Wadi al-Buka. And it was also called, you know, uh, Mecca because, you know, uh, because the Kaaba, and also it was called Mecca because people would go over there and weep, subhanAllah. And it says over here in number six, they make it a spring. And we know there is a spring there, which is? Zamzam, sahih. And the early rain also covers it with blessings. SubhanAllah, whoever goes there, he gets 10,000, 100,000 blessing more than what he gets in, in normal you know, rituals. SubhanAllah. And so um, 
That's what it says. So uh, as it says, you know, it says over here, passing through the valley of Bakka, and it says in, in Surah Al-Imran, now I'm gonna match it with what the Quran says, indeed the first house of worship established for mankind was that at Bakka. And look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually calls Mecca as Bakka to match it with, to tell the people who read the Bible that actually this is in the Quran and this, the Quran is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah. And it says, blessed and guidance for the words. SubhanAllah. Now I'm going to the New Testament. And I'm going to match what is in the New Testament with the Final Testament, okay, or the Last Testament. You know, and here Jesus is talking to his disciples. That's his, like, his last sermon. He's talking to them about that he's going to go. And, of course, you know, the Bible says, it doesn't say that he said that he's going to be crucified, but he said that he's going to go. And I'm going to read one, the, the verses one by one. That's actually in John 16, one of the Gospels. It says, from stumbling, they will make you outcasts. That's what Jesus say, is, is saying to the, gospel, to the disciples, to the Hawariyin. From synagogue, but an hour is come for everyone who kills you, they will think that he is offering a service. So he's saying that you guys are going to be persecuted after I'm, I'm going, and people are gonna think that if they kill you, that means they're doing something good, okay? Guess what? The Prophet Sallallahu said the same thing to his brother, to his companions, and he said there's going to be a time where it's going to be they're go, it's going to be really hard for the Muslims, and it's talking about the end of the days. It says Allah's messengers, peace and blessings be upon him, said, imminently there will come a time when the nations gather against you, just as people gather around a feast. A man said, will it be because we are few at that time, O Allah, o Allah's Messenger? He responded, no, you will be numerous. You will be a lot of people in those times. But you will be as useless as the scum of the sea. And Allah will remove the fear that your enemies used to possess from you, uh, from their chests. So he's talking about the end of the days. And Jesus also prophesied about the end of the days, about the persecution of the believers. Then he says in the next verse, in John 16, 5, he says, but now I am going. He did not say I am going to be crucified. You know, subhanAllah. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, bar rafa'ahu Allahu ilayhi. You know, rather Allah raised him up. He did not say that he was crucified. And here Jesus is saying, he never actually prophesied that he's going to be killed. Never. He never prophesied that he will be uh, he will die, you know, and there are some, of course, differences by the scholars whether he actually died or not, but we know that the Quran said that he was raised up, and he said, I'm going to be going, okay, and he said that because I said I'm going, you're going to be sad, you know, but there are good news, what he say, but I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go, the helper, the comforter, al-mu'azzi, will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. Now, let's talk about this comforter. First of all, it says that he gives comfort, okay? Well, in the Quran, it says about Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he, that he gives also comfort to the people. It says in Surah Muhammad, in his, in his surah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his name, it says, and those who believe and do righteous deeds and believe in what has been sent down upon Muhammad, and it is the truth from their Lord, he will remove from, the, the, uh, from them their misdeeds and amend their conditions. Not only just like to fix their condition and make it better, but it could be also psychologically that it comforts them, okay? Also, it says here in the same verse, it says, but I tell you, the helper, you know, it says uh, uh, um, about Ismu Ahmed. Also, it could be here that it was mis mistranslated to, it's supposed to be the praised instead of the comforter. And how did I know that? There is the word over here, parakletos. And parakletos is the Latin word, or the, the Greek, sorry, the Greek word for al-Mahmud or Ahmad. 
and Mahmud it means the praised one. So here it's talking about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay. Now let's go more about what he says. He says and and now he's he's talking he's explaining about him more and he says and he when he comes he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment first he will convict okay what convict means is he's gonna tell people that you are doing something wrong and you need to fix it you are doing something good and alhamdulillah you're gonna get azure for it or you're gonna get reward for it okay that's actually what it says in the Quran. Look at this. It says in Surah Al-A'raf, those who follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet, whom they find written in what they have of the Torah and the gospel, who enjoins upon them what is right and forbids them what is wrong. Ya'muruhum bil ma'ruf wa yanhahum anil munkar. Subhanallah. And then he says, but when he, the spirit of the truth, that's what Jesus say in the next verse. He say, this, he calls him the spirit of the truth. Who was called at the time of Jahiliyyah as sadiq al-Amin? The most trustworthy, the most believing person. Who was? It was Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He used to be called the most truthful, the most, the most trustworthy as sadiq al-Amin. And here Jesus is saying that this person who's going to come after me, he will be the spirit of the truth. Why? Because he will guide you into the truth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Surah Muhammad, again, it is the truth from their Lord. He will remove from them their misdeeds and amend their conditions. SubhanAllah. The next verse, it says, and I'm going to use again the same verse, it says, for he will not speak on his own initiative. Now here's the thing, Jesus, the, when you talk to Christians about that, they're going to tell you, oh, this is the spirit of the truth, that's the Holy Ghost. And he is the third person of the three people, the three persons of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, if he's God, then he should be speaking from his own self, right? Now look at the verse, what it says over here in the red. It says, for he will not speak, speak on his own initiative. He will not speak from himself, okay? But whatever he hears, whatever he hears, he hears from who? From his God, the Father, okay? He will speak. So there is some kind of contradiction of what the Christian says over here. There is no way that this is going to be the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit should act by himself, okay, as God. He shouldn't be listening to anybody, okay? It's Allah, right? If, he, if that's what they say, right? Astaghfirullah azim. But here, the, the Bible says, or the Injil says over here, Yohanna, John, it says that he will not speak from himself. That someone else is going to dictate him what to do, okay? And this is what it says in the Quran. وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى in huwa illa wahyu yuha. And that it means in Arab, in English, nor does Muhammad speak from his own, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will never speak from his own inclination. It is not but a revelation revealed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whatever he says, it is revealed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. And that's exactly matches what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And then it says, he will tell you about things that it will happen in the future. It will happen what it's going to come. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, وَإِنَّ السَّاعَةَ لَآتِيَ He's talking about the Day of Judgment. How many ayahs do we have about the Day of Judgment in the Quran? So many, right? How many hadiths do we have talking about the Day of Judgment, about Juj and Majuj, the coming of Jesus السلام, the coming of the Mahdi, the coming of Al-Masih al-Dajjal, about the, the, the signs of the, of the small hour and the big hour or the sad surah and so on. So many. And who's going to be talking about this? The Holy Ghost? We have never heard anything about the Holy Ghost, subhanAllah. But we know that the Holy Spirit, Jibreel alayhi salam, he only speaks to the prophets from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And so that's what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know. And so in, in, in conclusion, 
We know that many prophecies in the Bible talk about the coming prophet that will change the world to the better. And we know that Jesus, when he came, it wasn't, uh, it didn't, the world did not change because he only came to a group of people, the Jews. He did not come to the world. Although we see in Isaiah and in the New Testament, it says that he's, uh, that person is going to come to the whole world. And the only person who came really for all the words, للعالمين, is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He came for the whole world to all the people. You know, the Bible's first command is to worship one God. And one, one God is Yahweh in, in the Old Testament or Elohim, you know. And some, some prophecies talk about a man who is just king and a warrior and a gentle father and has children. All these prophecies cannot be applied on Jesus. So, for example, Jesus was, he, he was never married, as we know, I mean, we don't know, but he, it's, not, it's never written in the books that he, he was married or he has children. Jesus, alayhi salam, never fought, never fought against anybody, but we know that Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi salam, he fought for justice and for the people who are weak, right? And to give justice and so on, you know, and so all these things that they, they were mentioned in the Old and the New Testament, they cannot be applied unto Jesus. They keep telling, oh, it's about Jesus in the future, when he's coming in the future. But we have a living model that he lived it to the fullest, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu When I talked about the Bible, first command is to worship one God. Actually, I'm going to recite for you what the Bible, the, God, the Old Testament says. It says, Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh Ahad. Isma ya Israel, al Rabbu ilahukum ilahun wahid. And it says, you know, that you should only worship one God. And it's very much when you say, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Right? In the, in the Quran, subhanAllah. There are prophecies talk about the truth that will stay with us forever because that's what Jesus said over here. He says that He's going to come to you and He's, he's going to stay with you. And we know that the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, he he brought to us the Quran, and the Quran that is going to stay with us with no mistake, with no alteration, without tahrif, from his time until the day of judgment, right? As, as uh, uh, Sheikh Khalid Yassin, you know, he said one time, he said, if you bring all the people, you know, if you take all the Bibles and just throw them in the sea, and bring all the Qur'ans and just throw them in the sea and then bring Christians and bring the Muslims and tell the Christians go and, and rewrite the Bible and recite the, the Bible again. I don't think anyone would do that. But, and they will tell you, okay, which version to right? Because we have so many versions of the translations. But for the Qur'an, how many, people, how many Muslims, mashallah, who know the Qur'an from cover to cover without any mistake? SubhanAllah. Because it's going to stay with us. It's not only in the book, in the papers, but it's also in our heart that it's going to stay for us until the end. If we look closely, it makes sense that these prophecies are about another prophet that come after Jesus, peace be upon him, and it is uh, Rasul Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jazakumullah khair. So how can we use these information? Is it really important to know about the Bible? It is not really important, really. You don't have to read the Bible. But what is important is to know that, you know, that the Christians, they are too close to us. We have so many similarities between them and us. And it says in the Quran, is when we are going to discuss with them and negotiate with them about religion, always come with the common things, that we believe in one God, that we believe in Jesus, we believe in all the prophets. You know, and these are actually arcanal iman. All these are the pillars of iman. If you really make them understand the pillars of iman, you know, and the beliefs of Islam, and they believe in it, wallahi, they will become Muslims, inshallah. You know, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Of course, not everybody. Of course, not everybody become Muslims, right? You know, it's nakalatahdi man ahbabt, walakin Allah yahdi man yasha, right? And not only just that who Allah wills, ولكن لمن يشاء, even the ulama said, the scholar, لمن يشاء له لنفسه الهداية. 
So whoever really opens their heart and they really look for the truth objectively without actually listening to the news or listening to the Islamophobes or, you know, and just look in the truth. Allah, he will see his heart, how, uh, you know, how, how truthful he is and Allah will guide him. Allah will not mislead him. SubhanAllah. You know, and that's why we always pray in our prayers 17 times. We say, اَهْدِينَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ JazakAllah khair. That was my lecture for today. And if you have any questions, inshallah, I can answer them. Yes.